Hey, it's Joe from Home Studio Corner. You've probably heard of Melodyne, or if not Melodyne, you've heard of Autotune. These are different plugins, pieces of software that allow us to take a recorded vocal and change the pitch after the fact. Now, if you're allergic to this concept of tuning, then just click away now, go find yourself another video. But today I wanna to talk about specifically three ways that you can use Melodyne in your productions. Now, I used to be one of those cranky old curmudgeons, those grumpy old farts who thought tuning is the devil, uh, I will never tune my vocal. So several of my early albums, I didn't tune the vocals. I eventually came to real, whoops, sorry, sorry microphone, came to realize that a vocal tuning piece of software is is a tool just like anything else. So here's the vocal tuning, here's EQ, here's compression. Are you saying that if I have to use EQ on a track, I should just record it better so I don't have to use EQ? I, on the one hand, yeah, record it as great as possible, so maybe you don't need any mixing. But in down here in the real world, we need to use tools to shape what we recorded to make it work in the mix. I think of Melodyne, Autotune, all of those as another tool in my tool belt. I don't think it's good to rely on any tool too heavily, right? Let's get it right at the source. Let's make it sound amazing. But there are those occasions where I'll sing a vocal and it checks like nine out of the 10 boxes. The emotion is right. The energy is right. The tone, the grit, the whatever I want in the vocal, it's all spot on. The only box I can't check is there's a couple of lines that are a little off pitch. They're a little sharp. They're a little flat. I can either go re-record that again and again, or I can take this part that I nailed 90% of the way there and take it the last 10% with a little bit of Melodyne. So there's lots of different ways we can do this. I'm gonna show you three ways that I like to use Melodyne in my productions. You can add these to your workflow as well. Before we do that, I need to record a vocal for us to use. Give me one second. me with my own obsession the purpose in my pointless mission then nothing again I die all right that's good enough for 10:45 in the morning and it gives us good fodder for uh, using melodyne so there the three approaches to melodyne we're going to talk about today the first one is what I'll call the quick and dirty approach it's for situations where you just need to slap some tuning on this quickly uh, either you're up against a deadline or perhaps the singer says hey can you send me a rough mix of this to listen to on the ride home well, while they're packing up their stuff, you can do this to just get a quick tuning on there. It's not perfect and it's not mm, the most recommended way to use this, uh, but in a pinch, it can, it'll do okay. All right, so the first thing I do is I select this audio, I hit Command M in Studio One to Melodyne it, and that opens up Melodyne in, inside of Studio One in its own little edit window down here. So if you've never seen this before, um, it's mapping out, over here on the left-hand side, you can see these are the, whoops, these are the notes on the keyboard. And so then if you kind of draw that over, you can see I was aiming for like a D sharp here. Didn't quite get there, but you get the idea. So this is ba da da da. So it really should be B, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp. You can see the first two are a little bit flat. So the quick and dirty method is I just select everything, uh, typically by hitting just Command A. They all turn, when they're red, they're selected. I come up here to this little button right there, the correct pitch and I just say, all right, here we go, just fix it 100%, meaning the center of the pitch, wherever I'm off, bring it all the way home. And then if there's any drift in the pitch, meaning I'm, I started on key and then I started to go flat as I held it out, let's fix that as well. You can snap it to the chord scale, but as you can see, that may or may not be good depending on, uh, you know, if, if you just, I don't do that a lot, I tend to leave it like this. now. This on its own might be fine, but you got to listen to it to see. It's, it's a piece of software. It's not perfect. Um, it'll make mistakes occasionally. So we got to listen to it to make sure or just to see kind of what it did. So I'll solo this and we'll take a listen, see how close we got. Bore me with my own obsession. The purpose in my pointless mission. Then nothing. Again, I dive. So pretty close, but it missed a couple of them. So some of it is, we could blame it on the software. Some of it is, if I'm so flat, 
like if I like right here, this note right here is supposed to be. If I zoom in a little bit, that's supposed to be a B, but it pulled it to a f a sharp because I was so flat. Um, it thought that's what I was going for. Poor thing. This is a situation where snapping it to the key of the song could be helpful. Um, but it, but in this instance, I'll just drag this up a step. So now that should sound fine. The purpose in my ba -da -da -dum. That's the little melody that I was going for. And then the more obvious one was here. Something went wonky here at this last phrase. Again I die. Again I die. It was supposed to just be this E, D sharp, D sharp. I think that's what it was supposed to be. Let's zoom in. And I'm just zooming in with the pinch thing on my trackpad. See, it pulled this all the way up to an F natural. That's actually not what I sang. I, well, that's not what I was trying to sing, but I pushed it a little sharp. Um, it needs to just be an E. So that should sound fine now. Again I die. Again I die. It's not the best in the world, but if we listen to it in the, with the music, it should be okay. Again I die. Quick and dirty, it is tuned, and we've fixed any kind of big major glaring issues like it literally is the wrong note. This will be great for sending to the artist and saying, all right, here's a quick and dirty mix. Bore me with my own obsession The purpose in my pointless mission Then nothing Again I die Great. One of the things I like about Melodyne is it's actually kind of hard to get that hard tuning sound that you think of when you think of like auto-tune Melodyne. You think of like the share effect or the T-Pain effect or whatever you want to call it, um, where it's a really robotic sound. Even with this kind of hard settings of 100% pitch, or what was it, 100% pitch center and then 100% pitch drift, it actually still sounds pretty pretty natural like it maintains the vibrato it doesn't make it sound super super fake which i like so doing this quick and dirty version can sometimes be just fine let's move on to the second one but first once you get those vocals recorded and tuned what's your process when it comes time to mix do you have a process or do you kind of just randomly throw things at the wall, cross your fingers, and hope that it turns out okay. If you don't have a process, I'd like to offer mine to you. Take it and try it out for yourself. See if it works, because having a process is the biggest factor for me in getting consistently great mixes every time. Whether it's a single guitar vocal track, or it's 100 tracks of this massive production, I take the same approach every time and I'm able to get consistent results. So if that's not your story, I've got a free guide that will help. It's called the Five Step Mix Guide and you can have it for free. Just go to fivestepmix.com. All right, back to the video. All right, quick and dirty is all well and good, but we're gonna do it a different way this time. There's a couple ways to get rid of Melodyne. Uh, in Studio One, it's actually putting it on there as an event effect. So it's over here in the event effects uh, area we can remove it there and it just gets rid of it uh, you could also kind of reset the tuning that's inside Melodyne but we'll just skip over that for now all right so I'm reapplying Melodyne so this is the unaffected vocal it has not been tuned yet Bore me with my own obsession the purpose in my pointless mission you can hear <laughs> it's a little little pitchy all right so the second approach and this is what i do more often than not is to really just take my time and go through and only tune the things that need to be tuned so instead of applying this to everything i'll just go in and just listen to just go through the vocal phrase by phrase and find spots that need to be adjusted this is a way to make sure that you don't have a any kind of weird glitches and mistakes in the tuning algorithm uh, and b you only really affect the things that need to be affected so it's a lot more natural it's a lot less robotic sounding even though i think melodyne sounds great at the highest robotic setting, this is probably a, a more musical way to go about it. So I'll literally just have the vocal vocal soloed, and I'll go through just phrase by phrase, both looking at visually what's happening and also listening and seeing if does this need to change at all, and if so, I'll do that manually. Let's do that. Bore me with my own obsession. Okay, a couple of things are wrong here. Uh, this one there 
is weird. So the, the way it works, the blob itself is kind of the amplitude or the volume, whereas the kind of the line that's drawn in here is the pitch. So like vibrato, where you go, uh, while it sounds like it's a change in amplitude, it's actually a change in pitch. So it's, uh, that's what vibrato is. So over here, like that's cool. It's not like, oh no, he's sharp. Oh no, he's flat. I mean, it is, but it's, it's intentional and it's meant to be a part of it. Problem is sometimes these things get separated. So like here, it looks like the pitch I'm trying to hit is here, but for some reason this blob is down here. We'll fix that in just a second. But let's go back to this first phrase because that's where uh, I'm, ex I'm experiencing some issues. So this is supposed to be... -da 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 -da. Bore me with my... They're all just not quite there. Um, so instead of doing it automatically, I'm going to go through and just tune these by hand. So the way we do that, if I click and drag right now... <laughs> if I click and drag right now, it snaps it to the individual note. I don't like to do that as much as holding down command and then dragging it to kind of exactly where I want it. So, <laughs> I lied, it's option, <laughs> not command. So I guess that would be alt on the PC. And this one should be around C sharp. D sharp, this one's pretty close. And then this one, if we look, yeah, I didn't, didn't quite get up there to that F sharp. So maybe I'm doing the same thing the automatic thing would have done, but I can move every single note exactly where I want it to go. Or you could do the quick and dirty approach and then come back and manually adjust things later. That's kind of a hybrid of both, but this is typically what I'll do. So each of those notes were terrible, so I tuned all of them. Bore me with my own obsession. Okay. Now this, I don't feel like there was any problem except this note here. Now we could just click and drag that that up and that might be fine, but since they're so separated, one thing I like to do is fix the blobs. And the way you do that, I don't know if this is the official way, but it's the way I've done it for years. Select the blob you want to adjust, so click on it. And then if you hover your mouse above the blob, it'll turn into this little side to side thing. I'm not sure what that's for, but what I do is I find the spot where I want to separate this blob and I double click, just doink and it usually drops it where it needs to be. Maybe I'll do that as well. Um, so now I can take this piece, and this over here I think it's just like sound or noise or sibilance or something like that. So let's just see how this sounds with that adjustment. Own obsession. Yeah, that's a lot better. Now, if you go in here and you really jack something up and you're like, oh no, I've ruined everything, you don't have to undo everything. You can just come in to like this, for example, right click on it, Go to Restore Original, Undo All Pitch Changes, or Undo All Changes, in case you change the timing, which I usually don't mess with. Undo All Changes, it goes back to that. We can listen and see how it sounds. Own Obsession. Obsess. Just, I didn't quite hit a note there, really at all. But this allows me to go, uh, we'll just take both this time. Uh, -da that feels good. Own Obsession. And this one, it looks like I'm trying to hit a C sharp, but I kind of slid my way up to it. But when I listen to it, it doesn't bother me too much. My own obsession. I got there. So that's the one of those situations where, yeah, we could probably slice this up and really get it perfect. I'm good with leaving that alone. So as we move on through this vocal, what's the next phrase do? The purpose in my po <laughs> It's not the right note. The per... per don't don't make write melodies if you can't sing them. Per in purpose in my... my all right, let's see how that works. The purpose in my pointless mission, then nothing, again I die. Yeah, those last two phrases, I'm happy with all those except for this. Again I die. It went a little too sharp, so let's just go and down a little bit. That should be fine. Then again I die. That was a little sharp, and we fixed it, but now this note is a little flat. The last note's fine, but that one was a little off. I finally got there by the end. It's really fun, by the way, if you're the singer, to start to, you do this a few times, you start to notice, oh, when I do that, I always start a little low and then get back on the pitch, or it's the starts of phrases that are really problematic for me, or maybe your problem is you hold out notes and you lose the pitch over time. It's a super educational tool um, that helps me be a better singer just by doing this process. But let's see how that sounds. Again I die. 
yeah, I'm happy with that. So that, if we, I don't know if we can count how many adjustments I made, but rather than making, I don't know, 20, 25 adjustments like we did with the all or nothing approach, uh, this version, we really just adjusted a handful of things. That makes me feel better, helps me sleep a little better at night, um, and I'm not relying as much on the algorithm to get it done. All right, the first two, those were the ones I wanted to show you. This third one is just kind of fun. It's using Melodyne to create a new part as opposed to just fix an existing part. I don't do this a whole lot. I've done it occasionally to create either just new harmonies. Uh, maybe the singer's gone. You can't get them back. Uh, and this is a way you can create harmonies with the existing singer or to create like a vocoder sort of sound. So the way that works for me is I typically duplicate the track entirely. And a lot of times what ends up happening is I've got to take the original and bounce it. So I just did command B, which basically renders that as a piece of audio. Um, and then I take this new one and I can do something different with it. Um, so it's not affecting both. So I can click on this, double click on this, and I can come in and say, all right, I want you first of all to just tune up super perfectly. Um, and then let's just for argument's sake, let's just take it up like an octave. <laughs> and so we, <laughs> it's so Stupid. Uh, we end up with this sound here. Bore me with my own obsession. The purpose in my pointless mission. I mean, it's it's ridiculous, but it's in a mix that works surprisingly well. We could pull that down a little bit underneath the main vocal, and you get this. Bore me with my own obsession. The purpose in my pointless mission Then nothing Again I die So one of the things to be concerned about this is because it's the exact same vocal track triggering both uh, you're going to have phase issues because it's the same thing slightly altered so that's part of it is is that's part of the sound is you get a little bit of a phasey sound uh, just be careful when doing stuff like this but you could do this uh, over and over again. So we could render that one and then we could duplicate this first one again and this time we could say, I don't know, uh, we could take it down. So first thing, I'm, I'm tuning it so it's hardcore in tune uh, and then I take it down. Ma uh, Ma <laughs> and we could do that, see what that sounds like. Bore me with my own obsession. See, it gave it this kind of almost like a Daft Punk vocoder sort of a sound. So if we take all three, it might be interesting. Bore me with my own obsession. The purpose in my pointless mission. Then I said, Yet I die. Now, for this style of music, that's terrible. But if you had something that, that that lends itself to something like that, it's pretty interesting. And you can obviously go in and like do three, four, five part harmonies and move the notes around. Just know that A, it's a bit of work. Uh, B, it's going to have a phasey sound to it. So just lean into that like a chorus effect. And it ends up can be pretty cool. Here's an example of something I did where I took one vocal, turned it into a whole... Um, multi-part vocoder sort of section for an intro to a song and it turned out really cool tonight is when i needed you because you're the only one who knows the way i tick and crumble now, could you do that sort of a sound with a vocoder plug-in or a vocoder keyboard? Yeah, and it'd probably be a lot faster than me going through and melodining a bunch of different copies of the same track. But that was really fun, and I'm happy with the result. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one.